This is Otaku Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We dig deep into the great anime of the past to give you the context you need to fully appreciate the best this medium has to offer. Let's jam. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. This is Otaku Station, where today we'll be talking about the sixth episode of Isao Takahara's adaptation of Anne and Green Gables. Meanwhile, at the station, I've been working with uh, Sarah, a neighbor girl, to figure out what to do about the new garden. Uh, this is the third time now this week that some animals gotten into it and dug up the vegetable beds. Really annoying. We've added some fencing that we scavenged from an abandoned commercial park not far away. That'll help. Uh, Sarah's decided to stay out there with a pitchfork and wait until it shows up and fight the thing away. I'm not so sure about that, but given how often the garden's been messed up now and that she's volunteered to do it and not me, I'm okay with it. Don't worry, she knows to run inside here as soon as there's a problem. I hope. Meanwhile, I wanted to talk a bit about the role of Marilla in Anne of Green Gables' story, so let's head up to the research room to talk about that. All right, let's talk about Marilla, and let's talk about what Anne needs in a parent. What does the character of Anne need in a parent, especially at this point in the story? As much as we feel bad for Anne, and that's totally appropriate, and as much as we want her to have a happy childhood, she also won't be a child forever. Her distractedness could be a real danger for her in the future. It could cause her to say, not prepare enough food for the winter, right? These are real dangers. Remember, there's no DoorDash or Amazon. Someone needs to know how to do these things. She can't indulge those flights of fancy forever. They feel good for her, but they keep her from learning and practicing the skills she needs to be an adult. Uh, but she also needs to deal with the trauma of her past, right? So, Anne needs a few things. She needs stability, right? Chaos would just drive her even further off right? Um, she also needs personal attention and care for her long-term well-being, right? The parents and adults in her life have been much more distracted and not really giving her that personal care and attention as far as we can tell. And she also needs life skills and she won't be a child forever. Anne needs somebody who can bring her back down to earth and teach her the skills she needs for her environment. So, who does Anne need? What are the attributes of that person? Well, I would argue there are really four things there. She needs someone who will always be there, not just in the emotional sense, but also physically. Somebody who can, you know, always be around Anne, physically present and available for her, physically and emotionally. If Anne has a, a problem or a question, she can always ask or talk to Marilla. Um, she also needs someone who will do whatever is needed for her long-term future, like send her to school. We know Anne does, is behind in her schooling because she was caring for other kids so much. You know, Marilla clearly knows she needs to school, she needs to go to school, she needs some time to play, etc. She also needs somebody who can moderate her flights of fancy so that she can focus. I think I've made that point and then someone who can teach her the skills appropriate for her society, right? That's Marilla, right? That's very much Marilla. But we also note that Marilla is kind of cold and distant. Why? Well, one big reason people read literature is for character growth. They like to see characters grow and evolve over the course of the story. So it would help if Marilla could grow. She can grow if she starts off relatively, you know, closed-hearted and distant and then grows from there over the course of the story. This is why Marilla starts the series somewhat emotionally distant, so she has room to grow as a character. 
really clever all the different elements that come together to make that character satisfying both as somebody who will be important for Anne, but also satisfying for the reader to see some change, hopefully, over time. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Marilla. Let's head on back down to the tower. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Quick update. Well, we found out what's been digging up our garden. Sarah waited out there for a while and waited until she started dozing off. And then, sure enough, she heard something banging away at the fence. She crept up to investigate, pitchfork at the ready, and she saw it. It was a cat. But it was a huge cat, though. Like, this big, so she says. Um, but not from eating. Apparently it was a bag of bones. Something must have mutated it because it was desperate to get at our vegetables, of all things. Um, and as soon as Sarah got near it, it skittered back into the woods, but then it looked back at Sarah like it was starving. It really got to her. So she's downstairs now thinking about what to do about it. Uh, meanwhile, I know Steve and John want to see Anne's reaction to finding out that she's going to be staying at Green Gables, I hope. So let's get them on the line and continue our analysis of Anne of Green Gables. Alright, it looks like we've got both Steve and John back on. How are things out there? Damp. <laughs> yes, Very damp. kind of wet. Okay. Kind of wet. Yeah. Hopefully the acid rain is not too bad out there at the moment. No. Good. All right. Yeah, old, us... old Betsy's rusting, but you know she's yeah. she's doing fine. Been rusting for a while. In fairness. Yeah. All right. Well, let's have a slightly happier time, hopefully, <laughs> with Anne of Green Gables. I said it looks like a beautiful oil painting. Mm -hmm. yeah, something that would hang in a hotel room. Yep. Amazing. Note. Where are Anne's yeah. shoes? Kind of odd. Hmm. Uh, but we don't have any shoes on Anne. I'm assuming that her shoes are dirty. Um, or, or uh, like, need cleaning. Mm. Like that, I don't know. Um, I'll say, as a working farm, I'm surprised she'd be going around barefoot. But true. maybe those are the only shoes that she has so far? So she can't oh. afford to get them destroyed. Yeah. Um, also possible they need to, to, to wash her socks. Or her oh, stockings, something yeah, like yeah. that. And she's not going to clump around in her boots. So, yeah. yeah. So again, we're watching uh, Marilla being very observational with Anne here. Uh, how does she do these tasks? Is she doing them effectively? Her shoes were under her bed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So she is, and you know, again, Western versus Eastern. She's just been walking around outside in the grass on the yeah. ground, and now mm -hmm. she's walking around barefoot in the house, having yeah. been barefoot outside. So interesting. That I, I think it must be that the shoes are being preserved for doing other things than mm -hmm. uh, housework and farm work. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you have indoor shoes, if you will, you know, broadly speaking. Yeah. Right. Of house shoes, as opposed yeah. to the clomping around in the wild outdoors shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And as seeing as she hasn't been told she's staying yet, yeah. it's not exactly that they've gone out and gotten her. Here's your barn shoes. Here's your, yeah. you know, keep your nice shoes right. for church or whatever else. So. It should also be pointed out she's a child, and a lot of childs ran around, children ran around barefoot. Yeah. Right. And sure enough, there's her stockings, presumably, on the line. Actually, to that point, I just noticed they don't have a tablecloth. Hmm. Yeah, good point. Hmm. Interesting. Is that the only hook on the wall? It looked like just regular wallpaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. so if, are they all hooks that have that symbol, or is I, that the only one that has the like, No, I'm pretty here. sure that's wallpaper. Um, and I'm not sure if that's either an error or they just assume there's a little nail. Know, yeah, that we something just can't you just see. yeah, yeah. Um, hard to say, but yeah, it is a little weird that and now I'm going to hang this out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. just use magic spell to stick it to the wall. <laughs> there you go. Wouldn't put it past Anne's imagination. Look at that, that expression. Mm. Isn't it interesting? She's been focused on her tasks all day, 
but there's definitely this sense of concern. Uh, apprehension. Sen- apprehension, that's a good word for it, uh, that's stronger than it was before. Oh, there, ah. yeah, there is a little nail there. Very hard to see. But I don't think it was there last time. I, it wasn't. Yeah. When she no. went to hang it up, it was mm-hmm. not there. But they yeah. thought later on to be like, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to verify real quick. One second. It's there. Oh, wow. Oh, it is there. Huh. Okay. okay. <laughs> Interesting. I yeah. not, no, it was my I lapse in, in eyesight. Same here. <laughs> Same here. I just didn't see it. Wow. Wow. Um, let's, 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 let's comment on this. Um, so yeah, this does seem rather harsh by Marilla, but I think it calls back to her earlier point that her big issue with Anne is following through. And she wants to make sure that Anne is doing this. It kind of reminds me of, of dog training, where people, uh, when they train somebody on a command, um, won't give the dog the treat until it completes the action and then they get the treat when sometimes really just you know once they get once they get the idea that's okay you can be stronger about it the closer they get to the the desired behavior uh, but I think Marilla is setting a very high standard yeah well apparently it has kept Anne somewhat focused true for the for the time period that she's working so i think marilla is also gauging her ability to like hang in there <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. can you keep out of fantasy land and do and like in reality long enough to like bear with me yep uh, true you're right i also wonder if there isn't a, an aspect to this scene of showing japanese children what these chores looked like back then like there's a somewhat educational aspect right. of why did she do this? She's scalding it. Oh, that would clean it. I don't know. I must point out that was not in the book. Oh. <clears throat> the whole thing of the trees calling to her and her going out and doing all this, all original to Takahata as far as I know. I think that's why Marilla does that, where she's like, and, and, uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, it's, I, I, Got her to where to do the things in the house and whatever. That's mm-hmm. I'll just keep doing my cooking here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's also worth pointing out. She has never really had the opportunity to do this before. Yeah. Uh, she's always had right. chores and responsibilities and so forth, and not only enjoying the newfound life and location, but also just having time to relax. Now, it should be pointed out, like again, Marilla said, go out and play. She knows what that is. Um, but the the freedom in this environment and the full knowledge of that. Well, any other times that she was looking after other people's kids, yeah. you know, she, it always showed her like tugging along like a kid on her hip or like mm-hmm. little children running around. It's like so she got to be amongst children playing, but she herself was not freed from that right. to, to, mm-hmm. to experience what they were. Yep. It's like, oh, nice. Very sweet moment. And again, I have to add, this is not in the book. And it's interesting that Takahata is adding this to point out that Anne's reaction with Marilla is, you know, thank you so much, I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but with Matthew, it's this instant attraction, this instant, you know, I feel safe with you. Uh, thank you for the introspection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Marilla kind of gets it. It's nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, it's the other interesting thing about Marilla is um, she always seems to come to that eventually. You know, she she understands where it is, whether she immediately has that reaction to things. I also noticed they're doing something interesting here. Uh, there are no black lines in this image. So the outlines on all of the mm-hmm. art are these soft, like, blues or greens on the leaves. Um, and it just creates more of a soft pastel sense to the whole scene. Yeah. So this is also interesting to point out, because I think it's showing that, again, as much as Anne gets overwhelmed with her emotions and her desires, 
she's not she's still able to be aware of her surroundings yeah. right um, should be pointed out what Anne did there Marilla told her to set tea she put the flower in a vase first yeah um, which is not what Marilla asked her to do uh, so there's still that little bit of I know what I want and will unconsciously do that first interesting I'm assuming this is because of the mustache. That if you use the cup, it would get into the mustache, whereas with the saucer, you can control it better. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. He's actually drinking sake. Ah, could be. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would make more sense. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just look at his face. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, you're so cute. Okay, yeah, sure. Why not? You know. This is not Kelly. God, being awesome. <laughs> and Marilla's imagination muscles have not grown enough yet. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Marilla must be great fun at birthday parties. <laughs> <laughs> if you see the balloon plates. Why would you, yeah, well, why would you have balloons or confetti or, or cake? Yeah. It's impractical. <laughs> like, oh, thanks, lady. I don't believe in those things. And again, here we get back to that sort of uh, blue collar farmer sort of pragmatism of you know there's enough to do with real life without I've, trying to you know yeah. bounce off into all these fairy tale worlds maybe it is a sake reference or yeah, something about that, drinking from a saucer that, I don't that doesn't know. seem right though. like they they, yeah. they know enough not to do that um, yeah I don't get oh that. is it to cool it off is it too hot for him so he pours it in the saucer to cool it off and now it's cool enough in the cup. Mm, that could maybe, be. Maybe. I'll have to look up. I'm sure there's some Prince Edward Island thing, Canadian thing. Yeah. <laughs> where they did that. So Anne asks if she's ever going to have a bosom friend. Someone she can be intimate with and so forth. And Marilla just goes back to her washing. That's yep. actually pretty perceptive of her. She realizes Anne's just talking. Anne doesn't yeah. want an answer. So Marilla is thinking, I don't need to answer. I'm not going to get involved. I'm just going to go back to my, my task. Good on her. Well, also, I don't think Marilla has anybody like that either. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how do you respond to a kid who's like, I want this a great bosom friend. And Marilla's like, okay, she's talking, but I don't have one either. So I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, just go back to it. True. And again, notice that Marilla does not squash the dream or say you're being too imaginative. She actually right. comes up with an option. Yeah. A decent option. Not like, oh, yeah. someday you'll meet somebody. Yeah. And I'll just get back to the, <laughs> to the cleaning. Yeah. Like, that's an actual legit helpful thing to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good like, job, Marilla. Yeah. Do you think Marilla said that? It feels like a little, like, it's, you know, it's better to be good and smart than it mm. is to be pretty. Does that... It feels to me like she's, she's like, sort of yeah. talking about herself. <clears throat> oh, yeah. In that yeah. just moment yeah. where it's like, you know, it's just better to be good and smart than to be pretty. It's like, is that how you feel about yourself, Marilla? Yeah, I think there's definitely a value judgment there uh, yeah. on Marilla. Uh, the other thing to note, though, is that that's the... That is exactly what Anne needs to hear. And I don't know if Marilla realizes it, but she is saying, effectively, and your great strength, your intelligence, is better than the things you are currently looking for and valuing. Right. Yeah. Very nice. I'm sorry. I just, I just love Marilla's expression there. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Continuing to pump the water. <laughs> All right. So let's notice a few things about this. Yeah. Other, right. other than the fact that it's terribly sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, all the things that make it terribly sad. First, talk to her by the hour. Yeah. You know, indicating, A, how much just kind of general free time she has. Also, look at the state of the house. You know, yeah. the peeling wallpaper, the, 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 uh, all the, the various issues. Um, not the most wonderful environment in which to raise children. No. I just want to see more of Marilla's face. Mm. You know, to see whether she is she going to sort of break under the tremendously sad <laughs> weight right. of Anne's story and be like, oh my mm. god, this poor kid's had such a horrible life. Yeah. 
or just be stony and look at A. I mean, she did have a little reaction to the, uh, oh, and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, to the earlier point, she's letting Anne talk. You know, she was just talking about how I don't imagine things that don't exist. So she is personally against this, but she is letting Anne vent at this moment. Notice the music, though. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of weird. Right. Creepy. Takahata is pointing out, this is bad. Like, Anne is retreating into a, an imaginative state to a point that is dangerous. You know, not to get too dark, but Anne wants to escape from her life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the kind of thing that leads imaginative little girls to doing very dangerous things. Think of how emotionally bad she feels about leaving her imaginative oh. reflection. Yeah. Mm. For once, Marilla is giving, like, really good advice. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Um, and I think it's why Takahata was, was, you know, so strong on that, that image there of saying that, you know, what Marilla is saying, again, seems harsh given Anne's imaginativeness. But, like, Anne was going down a really dark road there, and she needed to be snapped <clears throat> out of it. Yeah. Interesting part about Marilla talking about her learning her prayers. Yeah. When Anne was talking about Katie Morris and how she would spend, you know, countless hours mm -hmm. talking to her, and all day Sunday. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Marilla being surprised Anne never learned her prayers, it's like, yeah. Sunday, Anne just spent her time looking at her reflection. Mm -hmm. Nobody else around, nobody else doing anything, no church. Ooh, good point. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that, that meant she didn't go to church with anybody. They right. told her to stay home. Yeah. yeah, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it should be pointed out, you know, Sunday was a day of rest, so you would normally have more time off. But given the other context, I think that is absolutely the implication there. Yeah. That, that Anne is, and given the fact that he was an alcoholic, um, yeah. the family was probably not comfortable being seen at church. So yeah. there was that going on as well. But I think it also, it speaks to, she, she didn't go to church, so she doesn't have prayers. She also didn't have the community of going to a church. Yeah, right, so true. she didn't have anybody else to Friends. commiserate with, so she was yeah. trapped in this horrible world. Yeah. Like, oh, 100%. Look at what she's making. A sniper rifle? What? <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Oh! Ooh. Yeah! Yeah, good call. Note here how they had to change the color palette. And she's in a dark room. So, yeah. literally different colored paints on Anne there. Again pointing out that Anne just won't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you watch Marilla's fingers? They're actually doing the movements that you're supposed to be doing when you're for knitting. Yep. Yeah. Literally wow. animating for knitting. Yep. All right. So what's going on here? She's very Spanish Catholic, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so a couple of things to call out. Uh, one is the religious imagery. The Lord's Prayer is calling to her mind all of the images she's seen of sort of um, religious imagery and that's kind of that kind of stuff. But then adding on the princess layer, but then deeper the idea that now that she can actually live at Avonlea, she feels like royalty. You know, she's now right. living in this blessed environment. Also looks a little bit like um, Clarice from uh, Casa Cagliostro. Oh, yeah. Oh. Which Miyazaki would, you know, leave this show to go work on in a few months. Yeah. <laughs> so, just saying. Ha. 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 <laughs> in other words, she doesn't need the fantasy anymore. Yep. Yeah. She can accept reality as it is. That's great. Which is interesting because she's accepting the reality as Anne of Green Gables. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I'm just a normal girl. It's she's mm. backing down from the high fantasy, but it still feels like she's in the middle ground still. Yeah. Like, I'm no longer Lady Cordelia. I'm Anne of Green Gables. You were at some point. I'm I'm assuming she'll get down to a point where she's just Anne. Mm. You know what I mean, mm. maybe I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I should call out. There's a uh, a line they just couldn't use in the in the anime when Anne is being 
um, is talking to the old lady uh, who's going to get her, and I'll see if I can find it exactly. Um, let's see here. Uh, when she's asked what her, her name is, um, it was, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Um, do, 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 do. Um, how old are you and what, what's your name? Mrs. Blewett demanded. Anne Shirley, faltered the shrinking child, not daring to make any stipulations regarding the spelling thereof. <laughs> um, and you just think about how important her identity is to her. You know, how she tries to redefine it, how she tries to uh, concern herself with the color of her hair and how beautiful she is and all those sorts of things. Uh, this is something that she thinks about a lot. So the fact that she is already coming up with this identity of Anne of Green Gables uh, is, on the one hand, not surprising, but also an indication of how strongly she's connected to this place. Yeah. Also, it should also be pointed out, she spent, what, five seconds with the Lord's Prayer in there? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she's oh, off into, into La La Land again. <laughs> yeah. It is just, it is interesting to see her mm. identifying with, with Green Gables and how she came up with Katie when she couldn't be Anne of the broken down drunkard house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's like, it's such an interesting to, to her, for her to pivot, to identify not as just a something different person. Mm -hmm. She right. is her person at this new happy place. Yeah. And she's melded those two things together to put, put that put that identity out there. I'm mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. To quote the book at that point, although some other things have changed, um, Anne blew a couple of airy kisses from her fingertips past the cherry blossoms and then, with her chin in her hands, drifted luxuriously out on a sea of daydreams. So that was episode six of Anne of Green Gables, titled Anne of Green Gables. What do we think? Um, is that kind of what we expected from this episode? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a way for, for us to transition, I feel, mm -hmm. out of, like, the first few episodes of just, like, hi, I'm using escapism because my life is so horrible, and everything is just, you know, you know here, let's dig the knife in a little bit deeper. Let's twist it. Let's twist it a little bit harder now. Now we're getting to the point of, okay, acceptance, she's starting to move forward, still got the daydreaming thing going on, and, you know... I would have loved to see that conversation between Marilla and her going, why didn't you memorize the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> why, why not? I, I, I was thinking about the, the, the things that are... But anyway, it, <clears throat> but you know, we're, I feel like this is like very much of a transitional uh, episode where things were now, we're no longer worried about whether or not she's going to be with them, she's going to be with them now. Mm -hmm. And how that's the new dynamic. How is she going to deal with that? Like, you know, can I call you aunt and uncle? Well, no, not really. Yeah. And, you know, and then Marilla, you know, kind of putting the, 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 her feet down or so to speak, and just saying, this is, you're going to live here. This is what you got to do. And actually, and then giving her good advice as an adult of uh, just like, oh God, we're, no, 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 you can't do that. <laughs> Talking to your reflection and crying. <laughs> um, we're, please. Oh God, I, I need to find you a friend. Something. Mm -hmm. Anything. So I think it it was just kind of like, it takes us out of that dread that 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 um, that dread that anticipation anxiety, and more along the lines of, okay, this is the new dynamic. How is she going to move forward from that? Yeah. Yeah, we get a nice establishment of roles, mm -hmm. not yeah. aunt, not mom, but we all have our roles to play in this. Mm -hmm. I so I find it continually interesting that. Matthew is the soft touch. Mm -hmm. So Matthew's like full on board for basically the minute he picks her up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that all of this to now has just been this sort of glacial repositioning of Marilla and her like <laughs> dealings with Anne, her, yeah. her dealings with herself, you know, and this sort of contact between somebody who is the ultimate pragmatist and somebody who needs someone to help them focus. Um, yeah. 
So it's, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, we've gotten this much development with Marilla. I, I, I would look forward to going more forward to see a little bit more Matthew time. Yeah. We almost yeah. had her go to the barn to see the cats. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Matthew, the soft touch. He's like, you want to come? You know, come with me. Come see the animals. Come see the cats. And it's like, we'll get there. It's mm-hmm. there's that feeling that we're gonna get there, but Marilla has to like set the bookends on this to keep Anne channeled yeah. for now, yeah. so that she understands what they're what how they're gonna do this going forward, what their positions yeah. are. And this gets back to what we were talking about before that. And for better or worse, her place is going to be in the kitchen doing housework, doing that. You know, she's not going to be out, you know, milking the cows or doing, you right. know, working the fields, right? That's just planting not, seeds and stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, and it doesn't mean actually. I, I think later on you do see her milking cows. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you know, she learns the farm work. But point yeah. being that her primary role will be with Marilla, and so the central thing to your guy's point is getting Marilla's bow pointed in the right direction because she's yeah. going to be spending most of her time you know there um, so it is it is central to make sure that is that is true and to your point about about doing certain chores Marilla was helping Matthew milk true so yeah. yes that is entirely within Marilla's yeah. scope of what is appropriate for Anne to do. So yes, that does not surprise me. At some point she milks a cow yeah. because yeah. that's going to be part of her training. Yeah. And I, I, I recall it's more, you know, Marilla, I'm sorry, um, Anne's not going to be, you know, hitching the horse to the plow. Yeah. You know, right. that kind of, you know, hard manual labor is just not something that Matthew's going to ever task her with. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Understandably. Um, but. I can totally see Marilla like going to Anne and going, "Okay, you're gonna help with Matthew on the f- out in the field," and she's gonna get to Matthew. Matthew's just gonna be like, "Where's Marilla?" Okay, the cats are in the barn. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or put Anne on the back of the plow horse so mm-hmm. Anne can just ride the horse while Matthew right. sort of does <laughs> the plowing. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, where it's like she's included, but it's just that Matthew's sort of joy of having her around, oh, around. Being yeah. He's a softie. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, um, speaking of Matthew, the the saucer thing. Yeah. So what I was able to to look mm. up real quick was one of two things. First thing being John, that in some cases, practical cases, that is what to do with tea if it's too hot. Okay. Is important to the saucer. So there there's one one uh, school of thought is that the other school of thought is that in some cultures. That is a, you are signaling, when you dump out the rest of the tea into your saucer and you drink it, you're telling the person who normally pours the tea, you are done with the tea, and that's a polite way of saying it. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So. Cool. Gotcha. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we've definitely got, uh, yeah, to your point, Steve, a, a transition point here in the story where, and I also appreciate that again, a lot of other adaptations, this would be a good place to stop, right? To say, okay, well, she's she's at Green Gables, and you could kind of build to that, but what we have at this point is the curiosity of Marilla's relationship with Anne. Like we want to know where that's going, where that's going to develop. We want to know what's going to happen with Diana. Um, we've got enough questions now to propel us further in the story and not just go, oh good, she's not going to be a, a, a traumatized orphan the rest of her life. I can stop watching now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, They're going to send her off on a tuna boat. <laughs> <What? laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Anything else to mention? Um, oh yeah. Go back forward. Um, I should also point out from the book perspective, this is very chopped up. So they reorganize a lot of stuff, partly because they take one important scene that was in here and they move it to much later in the anime. Mm -hmm. Um, And we'll get to that much later. And it is, I think it fits in that spot better than it fits here in terms of the structure of the anime. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, re- it results in kind of them reworking and rewiring things around all the time. Matthew, I, I believe, basically does not show up in, uh, 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 in this, basically. 
Uh, it all basically takes place in that morning where Marilla says, you know, you're going to stay with me. Great. You know, um, and then here's the Lord's Prayer. Go do it. You know, uh, and does not wander off, basically. Right. So it's, it's more of a compressed and re reworked storyline. But again, I think it works great for the, an for the anime to, to give us that and to remind us that Anne is so grateful to be here. That this is transformative for Anne. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it for episode six of Anne of Green Gables. Unless you guys have anything else to, to add. Yeah. I'm just glad that we're closing on this frame here as mm -hmm. opposed to, <clears throat> you know, a terse, tense carriage ride somewhere with <laughs> Yeah. It well, is... it is... It... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it is interesting to think of Marilla saying to Anne that, you know, only, she, only good little girls can stay kind of, mm -hmm. kind of thing when they yeah. were in the kitchen. So that... We, we still see Marilla coming down from, I don't really want Anne to accepting that she's going to have Anne, but sort of, it felt like it was a slight reminder to Anne that, you know, be grateful mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, we've, we've taken this turn with this now. Mm -hmm. And then you get further into this where she's like, just basically I'm knitting Go upstairs, read Lord's Prayer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> go. So that, you know, you've got... You, in just this single episode, yeah. you just see Marilla is continuing this process down from being this, you know, persnickety old bitty to being <laughs> more... more understanding of Anne. Certainly that story, I think, really helps yeah. Marilla understand where Anne's head's at and had been. Yeah. So... Um, it also adds an interesting element to, to that point. I hadn't thought that through. That I wonder if Marilla's desire to cut down on that imaginative aspect of Anne is also realizing how bad that was for Anne to an extent, right, in the past, mm -hmm. of realizing that she went so far down that path that it could have led to very, you know, again, dangerous territory. And right. so now when she sees it, she's like, I got to step that out. Like, no, 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 just stop. Which can become a little overzealous at times, right? When Anne yes. is just off on a temporary flight of fancy. But now you can understand a little bit more of where Marilla's coming from, where she right. is, is, you know, cautious for understandable reasons. Yeah. Well, also, the, the, and it calls, calls back to her pragmatism. Anne doesn't need that anymore. True. Yeah, you're you right. Know what I mean, to not to not be the the Marilla of the group. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just that concept. Yeah. It's like, I've heard your story. Mm -hmm. You escaped terrible things mm -hmm. by going into your imagination and just living out of fantasy. Mm -hmm. You don't need it anymore. You're at Green yeah. Gables. Mm -hmm. Things are good here. Mm -hmm. I'll show you all the things you need to do to be a good girl. You'll go to church. You'll go to school. You don't need that. You can mm -hmm. put it aside. Yeah, it's like, well, thank you for being the ultimate pragmatist, Merle. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's very stoic, right? Yeah. You know, her view is that is um, not helpful, and at at worst, it is distracting you from the actual, real, pragmatic work that we need to do to actually get food yeah. on the table. So, you know, it's it's a um, um, a bad habit in a way. Right, where it's like you got to set it aside. Wasted energy, yeah, that yeah. could be turned towards getting the farm doing the things the farm does. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so, so you can see where she's coming from. Even if sometimes yeah. you're like, let her be a kid. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, Marilla was never a child. No, <laughs> <laughs> she, she popped she out was looking born. exactly yeah, what she was. Like. Born as is. Wow. Yeah. All right, episode six. And of Green Gables, quite a show. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Good news. Sarah took a plate of veggies and a bit of croissant out beyond the garden, set it out where she last saw the cat, and then retreated and waited. Sure enough, in no time, the cat sprang out of the woods and started wolfing it down. Sarah then got the bright idea to approach it, but wouldn't you know it, the creature started purring. 
apparently that just melted Sarah's heart, so she started to talk about feeding it. And, of course, that means once Sarah leaves and goes back to her parents, I'll have to feed it. Oh, well. It's good to have someone else around. I think we'll have a new pet around here soon. I can live with that. Anyway, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon. And until then, watch more anime.